Pharmacists play a vital role in improving a patient's ability to adhere to an anticoagulant. So when we look at warfarin, for example, there is a whole system that's been developed in monitoring warfarin that pharmacists in the community play a huge role in as far as anticoagulation clinics. But when you look at the newer anticoagulants, it's really the nuts and bolts community pharmacists that play a huge role. Also, there's issues with transitions of care. So a patient's newly started, they may be in the hospital, and they're transitioning to the outpatient to make sure that the patient can afford their medication. I'll use that as an example for an inpatient. We make sure that a patient is agreeable to the anticoagulant that's selected in terms of looking at the, both the monitoring strategy and their cost of the medication. We don't want a patient showing up to get a prescription and saying, oh, I can't afford that, and walking away. The newer anticoagulants, unfortunately have a much shorter duration of action than warfarin. So warfarin actually is not as important if you miss a dose. And when you look at some of the data that's been evaluated, patients miss warfarin doses. People think, oh, they're very compliant, but there's about 25% of the doses that are skipped or missed. And with warfarin, with a half-life of 36 or 48 hours, it's not as big of a deal to miss one dose. With the newer anticoagulants, it may be a big deal because it leaves them unprotected for stroke and systemic thromboembolism. And so therefore, the making sure that they adhere to every dose is important. A newer data that was looking at the ability of patients to adhere suggests that about 88% of their patients take their medications with the newer anticoagulants. And persistence can be better with the newer anticoagulants. So about 60% of patients maintain warfarin therapy the first year of therapy. That means 40% of patients stop it completely for whatever reason. But the newer anticoagulants seem to be better tolerated. So when you look at ability of a pharmacist to help with adherence, there's a few management strategies that we can help with. One is there's certainly refill reminders. That's very important. Uh, the second is when you look at, uh, for instance, dabigatran, it can't be crushed or broken. So it has to stay in its original container. And I know pharmacists are big in recommending pill boxes, but you can't take the dabigatran out of a pill box. It actually has a desiccant type and can essentially air exposure to air, repeated exposure it is not recommended. So it's recommended to stay in the original container as an example. So pharmacists can make sure that that happens and it's not taken and put with a massive quantity of pills in a pill box on a daily basis. But there are other tools that are available for pharmacists for adherence. There's um, information with each of the new manufacturers' uh, websites. There are essentially surveys that patients can take, share with their caregivers about can they tolerate it or not. It's the same type of counseling essentially that we would do with high blood pressure. You know, if you're having a problem with the medication, don't stop it, let somebody know. That's, it's important that you don't stop it. There are other options, and the reasons that you feel you miss, you know, may miss doses or don't tolerate doses need to be discussed with someone. And those conversations can happen with a pharmacist. During transitions of care, pharmacists can play an important role. Just like warfarin, it's important for everyone to identify who the primary prescriber of the medication is. That person is the individual that needs to be contacted related to potential drug-drug interactions that may develop during the course of therapy. That's the person the pharmacist needs to contact. If the patient's having difficulty refilling their medication, not being adherent to therapy, um, if you've identified gaps of therapy that need to be discussed with the patient and the provider. So there needs to be a single indiv individual who's responsible for maintaining the patient's anticoagulation, which is really no different than warfarin. So that identification, um, also important in terms of looking at follow-up monitoring. Each of these agents requires renal function monitoring. So knowing a patient's creatinine clearance is important for a pharmacist, not only to check the dose, the proper dose of the medications, but also in terms of looking at potential follow-up for renal function monitoring. So the lower the renal function, the more frequent the monitoring is. So at least maybe every few months in a patient that has a creatinine clearance of less than 60 and annually in a patient that has normal renal function. So that assessment can be made that the patient's on the proper dose.